Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well and you are having a lovely day. And I hope you are here and ready to talk about the second novel in my debut novels, You May Have Missed Book Club, Sorry to Disrupt the Peace by Patty Yumi Cottrell. This was published by McSweeney's and it won the Barnes & Noble Discover Great Writers Book Award last year um, as well. And I will say, I think it was deservedly, deservedly so. Um, this book was also my friend Joss at Scribble's Read, favorite read of last year. So if you need any more reason to read the book, if you haven't read it already, um, uh, definitely all of that, all of that. And I'm giving it an astounding thumbs up as well. If you are new to how my book club works, just know this, about the first 10 minutes or so, I will try to keep it as spoiler free as possible. And then I will count you out and then I'll talk about some more of the specifics in the second part of the video and go into a little bit of the spoilers. So. What is Sorry to Disrupt the Peace? What is it about and how is it formed? This is the story of Helen Moran. Helen is a woman in her 30s and she is um, living in New York in a studio apartment with a roommate on a day where she's waiting for a new Ikea couch to be delivered, where she gets a phone call from a distant uncle who announces to her that her younger adopted brother has passed away via suicide. And the, um, you learn very quickly that both herself and her brother are adopted. Both her and her brother are Korean, and they were adopted and raised by a white couple in Milwaukee. Um, Helen has fallen out with her adopted parents and even really her brother. The communication between her parents and her has been missing for years, and her brother and her has been sporadic. Um, and she decides, Helen decides, that she is going to return home for two reasons. One, to help her family um, through this, and then also to investigate for herself the reasons why her brother committed suicide. Um, a couple of more interesting facts about Helen is in New York, she works part-time with youth, at-risk youth, um, kids that suffer from drug addiction, homelessness, all sorts of abuse, um, and she is sort of a counselor in that. Um, you learn that she considers herself termed sister reliability, um, which is an interesting thing um, that plays into sort of who Helen Moran is as a character. And I'm saying Moran. Let me make sure that's right. That's how I'm saying it. M-O-R-A-N. Moran? I think that's right. Um, I, here's the thing. So those of you that are going to this novel, this novel is about this woman returning to Milwaukee and entering a home she hasn't been in in five years to parents who are not expecting her and a relationship that has clearly gone wrong at some point. You will learn from the very first pages that Helen has a unique perspective. There is something about her as a character. She is written so beautifully and baffling. Like there, there she's just slightly off center, if that makes any sense. Her points of view are often astounding, hilarious, and also troubling. Her ideas can be problematic, but interesting, and also they solve problems, kind of. Um, she has a total lack of attention to detail, but she prides herself on her attention to detail. Um, and you learn throughout the novel that she's been this way for a long time and her parents don't understand her. Her brother talks about it um, in, in some ways. And um, yeah, there's just a lot. She's definitely, you will never forget Helen Moran as a character. I was fascinated by her. I loved everything. There's like a humor to this, but it's dark. Um, and there's also just, I don't want to say, it's relatable in the fact that you know she's dealing with this sadness and this loss, but she doesn't know how and you don't know why. What's in her head? Who is she as a person? As the book comes along, you kind of see how she develops and deals with all this stuff, but she is so unique. Um, she does, she meets friends of her brothers to try to investigate. She um, goes through family history. We sort of get these flashbacks to when they, her and her brother interacted, her and her parents interacted. You get sort of an idea of how the dynamic of this family has always been. Um, 
Helen is selfish. She is blind to her own flaws, but in her head, she thinks she is doing the right thing. But things always seem to be one step off. Does that make sense? Um, you learn um, throughout the book um, that she's under an investigation at work um, that kind of leads you to understand who she is as a person. You learn how she is at work and the things that she does with some of these children um, that uh, as a way of trying to connect with them that is interesting and offbeat and is so ripe for discussion. Um, so when we get into the spoiler section, um, there will be a lot to talk about there. Um, the writing is gorgeous and beautiful and just has a tone and a pitch that you won't forget. Like you, uh, for me, I finished this book wanting to read whatever Patty Yumi Cattrall puts out going forward. Um, I think that there is so much to be said for someone stylistically that is doing something that I have never seen or read before. So if you are looking for a book, so this is sort of my last spiel before we get into uh, the spoiler section. If you are looking for a book that is stylistically and language-wise beautiful and unique, if you are looking for a main character that you will never forget, if you are looking for a take on a story a dealing with grief in a way that you probably haven't read before, this is the book for you. Um, I can see that Helen is not going to gel with everybody because she is definitely unique, but give her a chance because I think for me, as I was reading her, I could kind of see her in some of the people that I know and there was a sense of reality to her. She, she just came across as real. Um, so I'm going to count you guys out into the spoiler section. I hope if you haven't read it, this was enough to pin your interest because I really definitely think it's a great book. Reminder that the third book in our uh, book club debut novels you may have missed is going to be Standard Deviation by Katherine Henney. This is out in paperback. You can get it too. This is the proof edition because I'm going to carry this one around while I read it. Um, but it is out. It's out in hardback. It's out in paperback. And you can probably get it at your library as well. Um, so join for that book in the month of September. September. Okay, in spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. You guys, what do we want to start with? What do we want to talk about? Um, I thought we would talk a little bit about Helen just as a character. Um, I thought it was very interesting when she reads the letter from her brother that she finds on his computer that he thinks that she's bipolar or schizophrenic. Um, because I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but I always felt like there were things that went on or stories or actions that Helen took that she didn't remember or w she would say weren't cognizantly the decisions she would have made or the reason she would have made them. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. I don't know what Helen's, what makes Helen Helen, what makes her beat, but I definitely could feel the whole book especially with her sort of distance from everything, she lacks an emotional connection to almost everybody and every situation, um, which we can talk about in a little bit more detail, um, that I found so interesting um, that, that, and the only people, the only person that tries to sort of define it is her brother who's gone. Her parents clearly don't understand her and are frustrated by her. They keep waiting for her to change, to be someone who she's not, um, which is interesting. Um, let's talk about the relationship she has with her parents. Did you like her parents? Um, there was something about them um, that I just found really off-putting. They adopt this young girl. She doesn't turn out the way that they expected. And I feel like they just gave up on her. There's like this, this sense of they just didn't know what to do. So they washed their hands um, of her. But they are really connected to her brother, um, as you learn, right? Throughout the story, the, the father, his scene with Helen, talking about the last meal that he had with his son at the Greek restaurant that um, he will never be able to go back to, is, I thought that was beautiful. I thought it was touching. I thought it was heartbreaking. Um, but that relationship 
which was interesting is he doesn't have that relationship with Helen. Helen doesn't judge him for the fact that he is so connected to her brother, but she doesn't seem to be off by that. Like she's just like takes it for granted. Um, the way that her mother is sort of dismissive to her. And it's just weird. Like you don't know if Helen is a product of her upbringing or if her relationship is a product of who Helen is. Does that make sense? Um, which I'm glad that um, Patty doesn't define for us. It allows us to make that decision for ourselves. I definitely want to talk about her role with these kids. The fact that, like, so the fact that she gives them the marijuana, I want to say edibles is what I think she does, um, to calm them. Um, I thought that was fascinating because she takes this unique perspective and I truly believe that her life is these at-risk youth. Like the fact that she talks to them outside of work, which is probably breaking every rule um, that is possible. Um, but she has a connection. She has, they are her purpose. Does that make sense? And I keep saying, does that make sense? So I apologize for that right now. That's weird. Um, I really was fascinated by the idea that she's under this investigation. We don't know really why, but we know she probably deserves it. Um, because she does this thing. You find out she's been buying marijuana on the card that she's been given to buy supplies for. And she doesn't really take the buying of supplies or stocking of supplies seriously. But clearly the situation needs her, her, her to, to, to take it seriously. Um, her whole dynamic in what is her world is so odd, but also interesting. Um, I, I just, I just really was fascinated with her as a person. I want to meet her. I want to talk to her, but I don't think she would talk to me. <laughs> so, um, I also thought that the investigation into her brother's death was interestingly done because she, you know, the book, the back of the book talks about these six things that she finds, but that comes so late. She really has the idea of investigating his suicide early on and with really no plan. And her, the, her interaction with people and sort of her people skills um, derails her from any true understanding of who her brother is. There were um, points where I thought maybe he was homosexual Maybe he was um, just so introverted that he didn't know how to deal with people himself. Um, I thought there was a lot of unique, you could kind of take things in different ways. I thought the friend, um, is his name Thomas, um, who pops into the story and doesn't understand why his friend committed suicide. Um, I thought that was really telling that no one really seemed to know this, this, this boy. And um, I think he's 26 or 30 or something like that. So he's not really a boy. Um, but there was a youthfulness to every sort of interaction we got to knew, know about him. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. Um, speaking of his suicide, his reason for dying. So he has decided that he's going to kill himself because he wants to give his organs to people who are going to do something with it better than he is doing with them himself. Whew, that's a heavy thought, right? And then the way that Patty sort of says, has Helen say, committing suicide was the one decision he made to do what he wanted to do in life. Um, I thought that was powerful. I thought that you can't judge people for the decisions they make, but when that decision is to, to, feel sort of, to fulfill sort of what they want their life to be about. He truly wanted his organs to go to people um, so that they could live full and rewarding lives. Um, and there's something really um, heroic, maybe the wrong word, but I really, I took to that. I thought that was a powerful, powerful statement. Um, I thought the end of the book is heartbreaking. I know Helen cared for her brother. I, there was no doubt for me in this whole book that he cared, she cared for him. And the fact that she goes on this adventure with all of this stuff and she, she meant to be there, but something about her life doesn't allow her to fulfill her desires. And I don't know what that is, but I really felt like she was heartbroken that she didn't make it to the funeral. And the fact that her parents just sort of 
whatever it off is 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 just sort of a whole part of who she is as a person i i thought the book was heartbreaking i thought it was beautiful and i will never forget helen i won't i think she is one of the most memorable characters i have ever read um, what did you guys think? Let's talk about the sections that you guys thought were important. What really moved you? What complicated you? What confused you? Um, did you like the book? Please talk to me about it in the comments below. As always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you're new to my channel and this is the first video, join my book club. Come on along. We are going to be again reading Standard, De Standard Deviation by Catherine Henney. I hear this book has a lot of humor, so it will uh, be um, more humorous than the first two books that we've read in the series. Um, and this will be our September read. But if you do get a chance, please, if you haven't already, sorry to disrupt the piece by Patty Yumi Control. It is freaking brilliant. Until next time, happy reading, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye!